Good afternoon, everyone. Christ deemed to be University, School of Commerce, Finance, and Accountancy, welcomes you all for its first Thought Leaders discussion series. I, Saumya V, and my dear colleague, Dr. Sunil MP, are the moderators for today's session. The theme for today's interaction is academic leadership, and we have with us Professor Dr. Pankaj Gupta, Global Academic Leader with successful professional experience of over 30 years as a professor, researcher, and an institution builder. He is currently Professor JGLS and Dean OCS at OB OP Jindal Global University. Professor Dr. Pankaj Gupta, PhD, is a Fulbright Fellow, CMA, GCPCL Harvard, Fellow of ICAI and an alumnus of Lucknow University and IM Ahmedabad. He has served in senior leadership position in several top organizations such as IMT Ghaziabad, Symbiosis Bangalore, Educom Raffles, IIHMR University, University of Washington, USA, SP Jain, Dubai and Singapore, IIM Calicut, Raipur, Rohtak and ICSI, among others. Dr. Gupta have written several books and research papers and has delivered guest talks and presentation in several top business schools in India and abroad. He has been a resource person with British Council, Fulbright Commission, UPSC, Planning Commission, PhD Chambers, and Zensa are others. Dr. Gupta has also conducted many corporate trainings and consulting for organizations such as Maruti, Daba, GE Capital, Ericsson, LIC, Genpact, CBI, and Indian Navy. Dr. Gupta has won several honors, including Fulbright Scholarship, Valuable Contribution to Profession Award by ICAI, Most Innovative Idea in Management Education Award, etc. He has been a pioneer in bringing self-awareness and mindful leadership into the academic setting. Center for Mindfulness, Wellness and Ethics, CMWE, set up under his leadership has attained national and global reputation in a short span of time and has carved a niche for itself in the overall wellness and mental health awareness among the fast-paced, stressful, and anxiety-ridden corporate world. We are indeed privileged to have Dr. Gupta with us for today's interaction. We welcome you, sir, for the discussion. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so grateful uh, for the opportunity and also such a long introduction. Um, I was just, you know, feeling a little embarrassed. But, uh, but anyway, thank you so much for sharing in such a detail. Um, I just like to say I'm just a normal human being and uh, try to do my best, whatever comes my way. So thank you very much. And I also have very, very nice memories of uh, giving a keynote address uh, at your university about two years back, I think just before the corona. And uh, I have a lot of high regard for your university and your faculty, your leadership, and also the students. So thank you once again. Thank you, sir. So, uh, so you have donned several caps in your life. So could you please share with us about the journey so far as an academic leader? Okay. It is, uh, of course, a long journey and uh, I do not know how it is started. I, I belong to a place, uh, Lucknow, you know, which is currently very hot political battle. Everybody want to, you know, contest the UP election and Lucknow is very important for that battle. So I was there and uh, I grew up over there at my all initial education, all these uh, initial higher education also. And uh, at that moment, uh, uh, I had to take certain action at that time and I, I had a taste of entrepreneurship very early in my life. So I set up a coaching institute and uh, that became very famous in no time because uh, I had created some very unique kind of business model, I think many, many years back. And 
95% marks guarantee course or else double the fee return. So it was such a unique proposition. And uh, so my seats got full, you know, four years in advance. And uh, in my whole career, I returned fee of only two people who, you know, still they got 92% and still I returned the fee because promise is a promise. And, uh, you know, whatever value you're supposed to deliver, you deliver, how you can deliver that in an extraordinary way. So one is that, you know, you take everything like uh, what comes your way and you deal everyone as a customer. Sometimes they become satisfied customers. Sometimes, you know, extra, uh, getting wow experience. But how you convert your customer into the advocates, that has been my mission. And then after that, I got the government job. You know, I, I was a lecturer in Lucknow, then moved to Delhi and then uh, worked with IMT Gazebaad. And the life went on. Then I got full bright. I went to the US. Then uh, there was a time when I used to only be in Lucknow to Kanpur because my uh, nani house, you know, my mother's house was in Kanpur. So very long time I was just, you know, shuttling from Lucknow and Kanpur. And when I came to Delhi, I got those international expos. And then I traveled around the world. I traveled more than 50 countries. Um, which was once my dream. I believe you just keep playing your natural game and uh, life will surprise you. Life will give you so many surprises. Um, but many times what happens, you know, you feel that this is the way to go and that is where there's some problem. While, you know, there is certain thing coming naturally in your life. And if you get present to that and you do exceptionally well over there, that is what I'd like to say at this point. I can give through more light if you want, but uh, I don't want to talk more about myself because it is already given in my bio. Or something. So has I have I answered your question? Yeah. Uh, so, sir, we would like to know what made you choose this career path. Also, is there anybody who has influenced you, a teacher or an academic leader, to take this decision? Okay, again, very good question you have asked me. Um, see, I had an option to remain in corporate or to remain in the government or even settle in the US. When I was in Fulbright, then I also got <clears throat> a fully funded scholarship and also a job opportunity in the US. But uh, I did not take that. I came back to India. And while I was deciding very early on in my life what and what exactly want to do. I was very inspired by one teacher. Uh, his name is Shashi Bhushan Pandey. He was the one who taught me in class uh, 11th and 12th. He was a great teacher. So I saw the kind of, you know, the charisma he has and the kind of, you know, great impact he had. And he used to have those small mini formula he used to create. And, you know, they were making the learning very fun, very, very interesting. So I got very inspired by him. And uh, later on, when I became a teacher, I found there is uh, so much of you know, the recreation of yourself every day. And uh, there are many of my friends who are my age and sort of what I can say, you know, they're all here have gone gray and they are looking old. But they sometimes ask me, oh, Pankesh, how come you remain like this? Why do all this hair? Everything is all natural. Actually, I don't color or something like that. So I tell them because I'm in the company of young people every day and I am also young by heart. And I deal with my students day in and day out and I live their life. So even yesterday also one of my students called me. Uh, he's an indoor and he had some problem. It created some goal for himself and he was not able to complete. So he just called me and uh, I keep getting one or two such calls every day. And I feel very happy to make a difference in the life of my students and also with my peers. As you know, I was earlier in the finance and accounting field, but now I'm into the meditation, mindfulness, wellness. So a capacity, you know, to live your life, you know, the way that you are learning every day. When I also worked in a corporate life, I saw that you could just follow what your boss wants to do. 
basically you are just trying to build the boss's brand all the time and by the time you become a boss you know that would be too late for you because you get only one life so you have to live it in this very moment so i realized that in the academic profession you are learning every day not only just earning and then i also teach one course known as money to meaning so i believe uh, you know money again a person can earn money I remember that for the first time I touched more than one crore salary. It was a great moment for me. But that uh, I was one time, you know, uh, I was on the top five list of the Corn Ferry. That was a global executive search firm, and I had a dream that I want to touch this number and all that, and I did that. But that did not give me very lasting happiness. So I then did a self evaluation: what exactly I love doing. and then i realized you know the teaching when i am in a classroom i am you know self realized self actualized and what you will little i know i am able to share in the class and also learn from my young students my young friends also so that is how i chose this career and i feel very happy being part of my academic fraternity and with my life i always give my students a lesson and a message that you know the planting the right seed is very important because uh, you know if you are the bright students like you know both of you if you choose to be in academy then you can make a very big impact uh, like this so i hope i have been able to partly answer your question yes sir so uh, you uh, as per you you gave many examples of uh, how you have been in the class so my question would be what roles and responsibilities are to be discharged by an academic leader okay see the traditional view has been that a teacher has to teach but that role is changing very fast um teacher has to be a facilitator you know you have to create enough excitement in the class so that the students are eagerly looking forward to the knowledge which would be coming Uh, and getting generated and rather co-created in the class question is that the gone are the days when teacher was like a sage on a stage and gave delivering the talk and you know the knowledge is shifting from the teacher's notebook to the student's notebook uh without you know touching the mind and heart of either so a teacher has to forget that he is the sole source of knowledge creation you know he has to work in a very collaborative way with the students to see what you know this was a theory what is the practical application now and also what is your view what is the students view what is the society's view what is the industry's view what is the global view and how we can discuss and come out with some new kind of a model because as you know the higher education institution they they are talking about knowledge creation they talk about knowledge storage and knowledge dissemination unfortunately what is happening that lot of people are going there in the knowledge dissemination space but not any people are there in knowledge creation space and the knowledge creation is only possible when the teacher goes to a classroom with a very open mind he or she also bring in their experience you know their research everything into the classroom and also listen to the student in a very open mind rather than thinking oh i know it all ye ye kal ka bachcha kya sikha raha hai ye kya kya sikha rahi hai so that require about a total shift of the being he i am great from there i am also one of the cool learner so if a teacher is going with this mindset a student will not be attending the class only for the purpose of attendance or for the purpose of only the grades but there will be joy and fun of learning over there so that is what i feel so it is used to don different hats sometime as a mentor sometime as a guide sometime as a coach sometime if you need some discipline is there sometime you to apply like a strong man also but also us tarah ka hota nahi kitne guru kumar shishya kumbh hai gal gal kaate court bahar half andar ha sahar de bahar mare chot so the meaning is that teacher is like that potter who is you know beating the matti you know clay 
and the people outside may feel it is doing some harsh thing, but from inside the guru is giving the sahara and uh, support to the student. But uh, for that, you need to be being of a dronacharya, being of a great teacher, and rather than only the doing part. So the doing, if you do, it may be, oh, why I'm doing it, I'm getting paid, I'm getting my salary. But these are not good enough motivation. If you really want to be transform yourself into a teacher, to a guru. And uh, the rules can be many because uh, the way you know that the mother, their care cannot be defined. Mother knows what is needed for a child. If it's a nappy, you know, whatever. By the way, you understand a little bit of Hindi sometimes or Hindi, Gotilla. Or you understand? Okay. So, what I would like to say is that, like the way the mother plays different roles, in the same way, the guru or a teacher also has to play different kind of hands. And appropriateness is that whatever appropriate behavior you feel, you will naturally know what to do. Because the spontaneity, if it becomes part of your being, like, you know, giving you an example. When I was a professor in I am Cody Court, then students are very studious. So we used to give them long cases and cases, you know, like, you know, 20 pages long and giving them in the midnight, nine o'clock. Mm-hmm. And after that, giving them one set of questions at one o'clock in the night mm-hmm. and expecting them to be prepared at 9 a.m. in the class. Can you imagine? Mm-hmm. This was one popular model because they thought you have to work in this way in a corporate. If you have to work in this way, you have to work in midnight oil and you go back ready to present at 9 a.m. So even I was that kind of a teacher to put pressure on the students. So a student uh, were getting ready for A or B kind of corporate jobs and like that. Now my approach has changed. Now I will say I do not want my student to be like that. Student talk about the work life balance. A student also talk about, you know, if you are, you know, have to work hard till 1 a.m. and you're sacrificing your sleep, you're playing a very short game. It is neither good for you nor for your family. So now I handle the life in a more in a balanced way. And rather than passing time during the day, I've done you know, eight hour job, but that. What you do in those eight hours? Are you alive every moment? Are you, you know, with full of energy and delivering the great output of 16 hours in those eight hours? Or you're whiling away that time? Let's say, oh, let's do some cooler talk. What regular gossip would I, who is doing what, what is happening in UP election? No, not like that. So you have to, because teacher is a living role model. If the teacher is setting the right agenda over there, taking real interest in the student, then the different kind of dynamics happen in the class. So these are my some thoughts. You know, it is a very passionate topic. I can, I can speak for an entire moment on this. Yes, sir. Thank you. So the entire world is affected by COVID. That too, you know, three different phases of COVID. So... What has been your experience? What were your major challenges you faced as an academic leader? Not only that, uh, can you recollect uh, any incident or something which turned out to be a blessing in disguise in these three phases of COVID? Okay. Um, It is indeed a great learning experience for me as well as for my colleagues as well as my students. So, COVID initially, people thought it is just going to go away. So at that moment, there was a lot of you know, resistance to that change and a lot of you know, problem was there at that moment. Later on, people realized it is going to stay on for a long period. So that you know, people had to realign themselves. And after that, people started living with that COVID. So I think that the whole three phases have gone there. And nowadays, uh, the stage has come where, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, we will anyway recreate our life around COVID. Mm. You can say living in, living in a co-corona world. 
that has been the case these days. And as you can see that more you are, you know, dropping these barriers, now you can see that the COVID is also going. Because one of the very famous thing is, you know, that more you resist, more it will persist. You know, like, you know, if there is a ball, you throw it on the wall, it will come out with a very great force. Then you again throw it and it will again come with a great force. And if the ball is coming, you don't pay attention. So the moment you feel I am getting victim by this corona, what will happen to me? Having those thought, anxiety, you know, trying to control the outcome, then you are suffering with that. So one is you know the letting it go and see that what is available. Because some of my students also used to say. Oh, professor, you know, we, I wish we were there in, like, you know, I came to Jindal, so the student used to say, I wish we were in here, lovely environment, good campus life. And I used to tell them, you look at the ground reality. Look at the case that otherwise you would be wasting your two years. At least you are having this education. You have the freedom that you can lie down in your bed and still you can attend the class. You need not open your camera. So look at the brighter side of the light rather than resisting about it. And my student took it very well. And uh, I used to also tell them that, okay, maybe tomorrow you have to make presentations. So better you uh, dress in a decent way so that I may call upon you to open your camera. So I used to also respect their privacy and uh, those issues. Um, so I believe. Corona period has been a great learning experience. Like uh, some of us were not having any experience of teaching online. Believe me, if you were having this interview, maybe three, four years back, uh, maybe I would have thought I would have even prepared something. But today I was just in another meeting. I just came in. I thought, you know, let me look. Everybody has become so pro in facing the camera and it is coming very naturally. Then another thing I saw that there were many of the CEOs and the top level uh, professors from MIT and Harvard uh, who would not have come in my class as a guest speaker. So now it was only online. So I requested them and they were kind enough to have oblige me. So a new way, like uh, there's no need, like you are just sitting in, uh, I think, near Core Mangla, Christ University, right? So it is a very crowded because I remember Namma Bangalore, I was there for three years and I still keep going over there. Um, suppose from here to go to the white field, you have to take a long time, maybe two hour time over there. Now you can have those e-meetings, virtual meetings are there. And people are also reclaiming their life, avoiding unnecessary meetings. Also a sense of hygiene has set into place social distancing and a lot of reckless behavior has been curtailed. A lot of reckless consumption has been coming to a little bit of curtailed. So I have also developed new courses, as I told you, money to meaning, mm -hmm. uh, success to significance, uh, mindful finance, you know, uh, responsible business and responsible marketing. So these are some of the things I have done. In fact, uh, last time also I did one program with Christ University. Some student club has invited me uh, to speak on mindful finance. Mm -hmm. It was a very interesting thing. So I believe it is a mixed bag. There are there were disappointment, but uh, as you know, crisis is something you know how you convert and you know crisis into an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, that is what I would like to say. Yes. Sir. So, sir, now several universities have started offering uh, online degree programs. And there are also online programs, including PhDs, offered by different online portals from across the world. So, in this context, what do you think will be the future of education be? And also, uh, these traditional universities or education institutions, what they need to do to sustain this changing trend? Okay. See, there are two kind of player in this field. One is, you know, I don't want to name, take name of the universities, but 
you all know that there are certain universities which are very shady universities uh, who are just there to give you online degrees without any rigor, without any tangible value being delivered to you. So I will definitely say that they were earlier also and they will remain now also. But people have to know that what is giving them the right kind of value proposition. Say for example, I was president of IHMR University, which is a collaborating partner of Johns Hopkins University. That is in Baltimore. It is the number one university in the area of healthcare. And so is IHMR in the field of public health. So they have now launched post-corona many programs like MBH program, Master in Public Health program, fully online, even executive doctorate, DRPH program, and so on. So when you talk about those universities who have a very set and settled process, you know, if you talk about uh, being face-to-face, -face, doing a coursework, and the same level of quality is being delivered by an online mode also. The people who also have the accreditation, accreditation body is there. So the accreditation body also take into account how these, you know, the teaching learning evaluations how is the assurance of learning coming over there? So if that is taken care of and you are delivering credit mapping and everything in the same manner, then there is no harm. In India, traditionally what was happening that uh, the industry was having a very, you know, like a thumbs down for the online degrees. So that level of resistance is no longer there. Nowadays, if you see that I've done something from Coursera or Udemy or uh, edX, so there's a wider acceptance of these things. So I sometimes say that these new age courses are like, uh, you can see the Dronacharya. And uh, as an Eklavya, you can learn wherever you are. So coming to those universities, it is... Uh, I, I must say that people have to identify that they are, are they accredited courses or not. Non-accredited courses, just you know, getting a paper degree is not going to be helpful for you. Because you have to see that why you want to do this degree. And what kind of learning you're going to get, what kind of brand value are you going to add to yourself? And is it being recognized by the employers or not? So these are my thoughts and Indian universities have to prepare themselves uh, for a virtual mode, for a hybrid mode also. Because even in the online, there are two kinds of online. One is where you already have a recorded lecture and that you are providing to the students. This can go on for a longer period and it is a very cost effective way. But there are some people who can get away, then why do I need it? I can as well as listen on a YouTube. Why do I need a university? So then you have a, you know, some lecture by a professor live, and then some professor will give, you know, some, and, you know, this is a pre-recorded lecture. So I believe the universities have to make a distinction. They have to uh, create new kind of products. Product in the sense for a market which cannot afford high fee. You provide them more and more pre-recorded lectures. So that a student can complete the degree, get the same learning thing at a lower cost. And at the same time, the people who can pay more money, they can also have a live advantage or a combination of live plus pre-recorded. And a lot of experiential programs also are needed, like the role play, games, simulations, online gaming. I'm not talking about those games, but you know, the academic games. That's that. And uh, so that you can make learning great fun. You know, before this corona also, I always allowed my student to use their mobile phone in the class. By the way. And I used the clicker technology where my students were using the mobile phone to enhance the learning. So I create a knowledge platform in my class and the student will say, oh, I agree with this. I don't agree. What is my view? And they were displayed in the classroom. So that the other students were also learning Oh, I think in this way, but this is student think in this way. You know, this is the alternate view. What is the reality? The entire thing. Uh, so in this way, professor has to do a lot of experimentation. 
and uh, a right combination will be a mixture of both the methods. Is okay. So, Government of India has launched the uh, new education policy. So, with reference to NEP, what is your vision for the future of education in India? Okay. See, in the NEP, there are many good points which uh, we have to celebrate. But the NEP has still not come out with uh, the implementation <coughs> module that how to do it. There's still many lofty ideas are there. But the proof of the pudding is in how you do it. There are few universities who are trying to think about multidisciplinary, class, class disciplinary, also the transferability of credits. But there are very few universities who have really getting prepared to implement the NEP. So in the NEP also, as you know that you complete certain credit and you get a certificate, you get a diploma, then you get a degree. Then you add up some dissertation, you add up some, you know, company related project, and then you get an honors degree. So all these are very good. Things. But we have to again see that if we want to implement it, then how to implement it. Also, there would be a lot of resistance among the teachers, among the academic administrators who are not really prepared for this kind of a change. And also the student also have to be, uh, working in a very matured manner. It is not like, oh, I'm not locking it here. Let me you know, shift from here, go to the university B, then university C. And how the employer will also look at it, that whether um, you know this person has got this certification from three universities, is it really a bright student? Or he, is more, he or she is more like a fugitive running from here and there? So all these questions have to be understood. One very important thing about NEP is about the holistic education, which is very, very important. That what is your sobhav and swadharma? What is the seed of possibility you have within you? And how you can nurture according to your sobhav and swadharma? Um, like uh, the life skills, the kind of uh, not only the avidya part, you know, avidya means, you know, you may study today the artificial intelligence, you talk about blockchain, big data, data science. So they are hot today. They may not remain hot tomorrow. But if some penny drop in your head and you know that who am I and what I'm supposed to do, not only you know when I was born, but why I am born, what is my mission? What is the legacy I want to leave in this world? And you create a bigger vision, you know, for your life. Then you, you, you know, ignited that lamp in you and become unstoppable. That is very important. There is a mission of Avidya. There is a mission of education to tell you who you are and who you can become. So that also a lot of mention has made to the NEP. But unfortunately, the people who would be teaching these kind of courses, they not only, uh, if you see that only from the book, the answers are coming, then they will be giving a very bookish talk to the students. It has to come from the heart. A lot of, you know, very experiential thing is needed. So I must say that in order to make NEP successful, you need to really do a lot of faculty development program lot of you know, the educators uh, development program with the dean director alignment program vice chancellor alignment program so then only it can be successful and of course you know the bureaucracy the minister they also have to give a lot of support and uh, then it is a great idea and it is also an idea whose time has come if you want to make our india again you know, a powerful nation, which it was. So I think it is a step in that right direction. That is all I can say. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. So we all know that you are an uh, institution builder or a founding director of several institutions. 
So could you please share with us your experience and also a moment of gratitude and satisfaction in these roles? Okay. You again, you are again asking one very interesting question to me, and uh, I feel I again go back to your city, uh, Simbiasis, Bangalore, where I was the founding director. You see, when you are given a responsibility to be a founding director or being an institution builder, it is a great responsibility given to you. Because the new student who join you, they are joining with a great hope. And uh, you have to fulfill all those hopes. The other colleagues would be joining you uh, on that hope and that promise. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, so what I'd like to say that whenever it is a matter of building any new institution or even transforming an existing institution, two factors are very important. One is how to have the right kind of students and how to have the right kind of faculty with you. And the third thing is the right kind of environment and ecosystem, how you create that. And create a bigger vision, tell them what to do, and do not focus in, you know, pushing their, you know, how to do. Leave it to the team. Let them decide what they want. And when you have a freedom to do a founding institution, then you do not have, you know, like on a board, nothing is written. There is a clean board for you. You can create whatever you want to create. And of course, when you're transforming an existing institution, then there are some, you know, history, there are some, you know, background. And you have to be very mindful about that history because some people will be very sensitive to that history. And uh, you have also to believe that and as an academic leader, not everything is bad. There is some good part of the culture and there is a not so good part of the culture. So firstly, the leader, if you are into a um, new institution, then you have to always keep in mind that create something which is extraordinary. I remember when I joined as a founding director of SIB in Bangalore, and my students were comparing everything with SIP in Pune. Ah. And many people who could not get a admission in SIB in Pune, they took SIB in Bangalore. Of course, some were there who were like focused to get only from SIB in Bangalore because Bangalore is an IT hub and uh, they wanted to be there. So I gave them in my message, a very clear message to them. They wanted you know, those companies should be coming to us or we should be participating in the common placement process because the students always are interested in placement. So I told them one very clear thing. I said, whatever companies are not able to recruit from SIB in Pune and just as a second option you are being presented, oh, now we have some people from SIB in Bangalore also. Would you be willing to look at them? So... <clears throat> Whether you want to play a second fiddle to them, you want to create a totally new brand. Even those companies who have never gone to SIP of Pune, can you dream that they will come to you? Do you have that power within you? You don't know if you are eating or you are eating food, 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 you are eating you create that level of inspiration, inspiration among your people. So that is what I did. And with the support of my team, I got a, only five faculty members at that time. From five, 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 five. Or each and every student, uh, even my student, you know, like my student president, my student vice president, and different committee heads, you know, like the cultural committee, the, even we had one very interesting committee known as Competitive Intelligence Committee. So, we also saw what is doing, even Christ, even ISB, and who are the great people coming to Bangalore and Hyderabad. So, we also took them too. Suppose there is some great professor coming from US to ISB, Hyderabad. So, we also talked to them first, that the professor is coming here. Um, Bangalore is nearby. We will arrange your airfare. <laughs> 
तिरुपति बालाजी ले जाएंगे आपको मैसूर भी दिखाएंगे पूरा हाँ मैसूर पार्क भी खिलाएंगे बढ़िया एवरीथिंग एंड ग्रेट ट्रीटमेंट है आल्सो ग्रेट स्टूडेंट यू विल हैव ग्रेट इंटरेक्शन विद देम एंड सम ऑफ देम केम फिर उनको इतना अच्छा एक्सपीरियंस लगा देन दे वेंट बैक टू द यूएस उन्होंने कहा अरे भाई ये डॉक्टर गुप्ता है बैंगलोर के वहां जाइए बहुत अच्छा लगेगा सो आई you know one thing you get and you do exceptionally well then you will be given a bigger problem and bigger possibility aur ek mila usme aapne kaha re kya mil gaya so fir then thing goes to a vicious cycle but question is that all the success was created in your mind and your heart and then you have to sell that success story to your faculty colleagues and to your students and of course then management was very supportive मैंने मैनेजमेंट से बोला कि नो आई डोंट वांट सो मेनी फैकल्टी मेंबर हु आर नॉट इवन पीएचडीज एंड नॉन रिसर्च एक्टिव एंड ऑल एंड आई विल लाइक टू डू विद द विजिटिंग फैकल्टी तो मेनी ऑफ माय फ्रेंड्स फ्रॉम आई एम कोडीकोट फ्रॉम आई एम बेंगलोर दे आल्सो स्टार्टेड इन टीचिंग एंड माय स्टूडेंट्स वर गेटिंग ग्रेट एक्सपीरियंस वी फोकस्ड कि भाई हमारे पास क्या है यू नो वेदर वी वांट टू बी अनदर मी टू इंस्टीट्यूट इन बेंगलोर Or whether we want to create a great niche for ourselves. So at that time, you know, two thousand nine, one of my famous interview was taken by Pagalguy. dot com. So you know, it is a website. I mean, you say that we want to be number two in bank or after I am bank. So I remember many people wrote some. Who the trolling was there? Troll? Kya mere ko? Ki bhai ye mungile lal ke hasin sapne dekh rahe hain aur ye kar rahe hain. But I did not lose heart. I think I'm lucky. We're going to do it. We'll do it. And my students and my faculty, we made it possible. We're going to do it. 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 We 24000 application for 180 seats and uh, so application to acceptance ratio is very important because that is how we determine that what quality of student you can have um it was so in this way one thing led to another thing then we created a executive programs we spoke to many companies over there near vicinity in electronic city and we found out what is your pain point i want to solve your pain point and giving you small small modules and adding up the credit and then giving you an executive mba degree which was very handy to them okay and many things i can share like uh, evening uh, program so people were coming on the weekend on the campus i told them that uh, my full time students are also here they would be too much willing to support you because you have some more work and you want some assistant and my full time student got an opportunity to live work with those executive mba students then they said oh professor we get only two days weekend and my family is you know missing they are complaining i said bring your wife and husband also so we created a nice room and common area for those wives and husbands and they are coming with the children we created a play area around that i said bachcho aap log khelo and your dad and mom will come in the class break and they will play with you and they will go back to the class so all opportunities are there you need to have an open mind and to see that where are the opportunities and to co create those opportunities and doing it really well with heart great sir i just it was really really inspiring so are uh, you not only are an academic leader or an institution builder but you're a great researcher too you have published a lot of books and articles so how do you discover and develop topics for research as a researcher and i have one more question what is your advice for the scholars and aspiring researchers in improving their quality of research and publications okay thank you see i have adopted two approaches in my life one is the traditional way of finding a research topic is you know that find in the literature 
what is said, what is not said, what is the gap in the literature, and then you find a topic from there. That is a normal way how the research will get accepted in a top tier journal, like ABD, uh, ADB, uh, ABDC journals or Scopus and SCI index journals. So if your aim is that, sometimes, but you are the kind of problem you're solving will not be that great. So at certain point in your life, you want to also publish for the sake of promotion and for the sake of, you know, that kind of a thing. You, you both are professors, I believe? Yes. yes. Okay, okay, great, great. But you both look like students, let me tell you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> so, you have a name for your name. Can you please tell me? Uh, sir, I'm Saumya and this is yeah. Dr. Sunil MP. Okay, fine. Thank you. So, Saumya Ji and Sunil MP Ji, let me um, tell you, traditional way is this only, that find out the gap in the literature and then accordingly you choose your topic. I also did that for a long period of my time. And also when I was going for my Fulbright also, then also uh, I have to do this model only. But that is, this model will not give you acceptance in the industry. Because industry is thinking not only the rigor, but they are also looking at the relevance. So this is R and R of research, rigor and relevance. So then as I became more of a corporate professional, as more of a trainer, executive trainer. So I focus my attention towards what is the problem being faced by the industry and how to solve it. By applying the research tool, by applying the rigor uh, and the, those methods. So I have done both and I will strongly suggest as a student, uh, as a faculty member and starting their career, they can focus more on academic research, but at the same time, maybe you focus 70% on the public shaven kind of a thing, but minimum 30% they should do industry relevant research, which may not be publishable, but that will establish you as industry person. You know, look at the US model. Why, you know, faculty members are paid like, you know, $300,000, $400,000. Because industry ko wo guide karte. It is not the best practice, but what is the next practice? Are you getting me? That is how they respect you. What happens here? Industry is doing this. Industry is doing this. Industry is God. It is not God. You have to also guide, but for that you have to reignite power within you. You have to say that yes, you are doing this and based on the evidence, this is what you are not doing right. You have the courage to say that. And that will come by a lot of hard work, a lot of, you know, actual when you are solving the problem of the industry. So when I was doing this kind of industry, one more thing which I did with, uh, with my uh, colleagues and students, I used to always involve a few colleagues and students in my research. So suppose uh, I went for a, I was doing a lot of cost reduction initiatives. So I took my student also to my consulting in Maruti Utyo. I also took them to electrologs. <coughs> in electrologs, you know, we sometimes uh, we were told that there are a lot of pilferage happening, a lot of uh, money is being uh, going here and there. So we decided we were living in Shah Jahanpur and uh, near Gurgaon. And uh, then we decided one day, let's go early in the morning to see how what is happening in the factory. Me and my summer student went there and I found that certain trucks were going out. We said, uh, we want to check that what is going in the truck. And uh, it was early in the morning, 7.30 or so. And they said, no, no, it's a kula hai. It is just, you know, the wastage going out. Then we checked, there was metal scrap was there inside. And they was throwing it away like a kula. Like, like a dirt. And I said, you know, that this metal scrap can be sold in the market. and You can get money. Mm -hmm. So sometime looking at the normal thing also, you need to have extraordinary view. And also the clean view. Sometimes you're wearing certain glasses like you're having a blue glass and you look everything as a blue. So sometimes you have to have a childlike uh, curiosity and uh, that kind of thing. Why it is happening? 
we have this, you know, YY analysis, fishbone diagram. Um, so I will say that it is very important. And the second thing I would like to say to my colleague in research that uh, do PhD from a good institution. Take PhD very seriously. In India, there are only a few institutions who are very good in rigor and relevance. Because the heart of any PhD program is the coursework. And if you do any PhD without proper coursework and without that rigor, it will become a handicap later on. So what China did, you know, China sent a lot of their young researchers to US and uh, they did quite a detailed uh, this PhD and then they came back to China. So similar way, if you get an opportunity to do PhD in the US, you must do that. And uh, the kind of experience you will get will be extraordinary. And that will further your further goal and your career. Uh, so that would be my advice to my young friends. And focus not only on the rigor, but also on the relevance. That would be my advice. So, uh, thank you so much for those uh, suggestions or tips for those aspiring researcher. So, even you sounded on consultancy and we know that uh, you have done uh, a lot of training and uh, consultancy projects to many companies. So, uh, first thing is how and when did you start providing these consultancy services? And also uh, in the same way for research, we want to know like what tips would you like to share with us on how to get these consultancy projects? Okay. I can share my example. I am a, a natural networker. I devote one to two hours every day in nurturing my network. I've got millions of people in my network, including on the LinkedIn. And uh, I take time. If somebody asks me anything, I will definitely do that. Um, and then whatever is given to you, do it really well. Because life gives you opportunity. If you miss those opportunities, the next opportunity may not come to you. So what happens that there are industry bodies like you know, the IMA, FICI, CII. So try to attend those events and be confident. You know, sometimes what happens, even if you go like a Christ delegation is going, so you will be all sitting together, Christ, Christ people talking. No, don't do that. You spread yourself. Even target, this guy is from Tata, this is from Mahindra, this is from TCS. You target it, you And that is how, you know, build that network. And not only the goodies, prepare yourself really well. Suppose you know the Tata is facing this problem, be prepared and then have that intelligent conversation with them. So if you're solving any problem uh, which they are struggling and if you offer any solution, Maybe initially free of cost. Mm. That would be very much welcome. We also do education consulting also. There are a few universities who chairman, I'm the advisor. At one university, I also manage the vice chancellor. And like that. So like a mentoring kind of a role, supporting kind of a role, whether the strategic direction is right or not, whether the goal you set, are they moving in the right direction or not, so sometimes one is the networking, which you can do this way. Number two is doing whatever is given to you exceptionally well. Number three, preparing yourself before any conversation. Knowing that what company is really looking forward to. Suppose a company is struggling with you know problem of labor unrest. And you are a professor of industrial relations. Why don't you write an article in the newspaper? You put this way forward and then it will attract a pull. Maybe you will get a call from the company. Oh, professor, I want to have pick your brain like this. So you have to create both what you can say the ATL and BTL. You know, the push and pull, both you have to create. So one is that right LinkedIn article, right publication, popular press, and that will give you consulting opportunities. And uh, also offering your services for free initially. There was a company whom I approached and I said, you know, I will save uh, X amount of money by cost reduction, by, you know, the value VA and V analysis, value adding activity and non-value adding activity. 
and also application of activity based costing over there. They said, We don't have money. I said, I'm not asking money. I said, It is your cost structure. If I'm able to bring down and save money, just give 20% of the money I save for you. So they were very happy. Like the Electro Electrolux example I gave, we saved money and then they were happy to share with us, which I distributed to my students. So once you get money and name and fame, do not forget the people who brought you there. So be grateful to them and share the glory with everyone. It is not like, you know, here by my Mahanu and the other people. Nothing. So more you share, more you grow. And uh, you should be seen as an opinion maker. You should be seen as a somebody who is powerful, who knows the job really well. And when you get an opportunity, you so that is where the power lies within all of us. Okay, grab the opportunity and create a lot of network, isn't it, sir? Yes, yes, Samaji. Very good, very good. That's true. Okay, so we have spoken till now about your professional life. So could you please something share something about your family? Family, very small family. Uh, uh, I have one wife, one son, my parents, that is my family. I have a sister who lives in Kanpur and I have a sister's son, he is also in Kanpur. And uh, my family still lives in uh, Lucknow, many, many part of my people are there. And uh, in Bangalore, I have purchased the land. That is where I was thinking I will settle down in Nandi Hills, I have purchased. So recently I was there and uh, I was just thinking to build up a, some sort of a retreat for meditation and mindfulness in Bangalore because Bangalore is a, a city which I love very much because of the weather and people and you know a very good entrepreneurial ecosystem over there. So I have a small family but at the same time my connection is you know my all my student colleagues they are also part of my family. I feel so much strongly connected to my you know, former students, my former colleagues, my current colleagues, my current students. I consider them also as my family. It is all a matter of expanding your consciousness. So really in my life, uh, when um, I did you know, I, whatever monetary success I wanted, I got it and then I also decided to quit everything and be in Himalayas for some time and I did that. And I remained in silence for a long time there and also I went to Bhutan. I did meditation on Tiger Hill also. So the Tiger Hill people are generally gone for 13 years but you have a system whereby you can do meditation for 13 days also. And uh, then you'll also get the bliss. Recently I went for this Narmada Yatra along with, you know, the seven CEOs from different countries. So it has nothing to do with any religion, actually. But what and why I do is to keep exploring myself as to who I am. What is the possibilities I may have in my life? Am I going in the right direction? And earlier all the time, you know, even I also have, you know, the two phones with me. They also try to bother me, but... I, I refuse to get bothered. I look into my WhatsApp message hardly two to three times in a day, not more than that. Because I'm not their servant. Somebody say, oh, I'll go with that, you know, you got a blue tick and you have not replied. I said, no, I have replied in my time. You cannot create urgency in my mind. So one is being restless all the time and going in here and there. Second is you know, being restful and going in the right direction and going as for your subhava and swadharma and knowing fully well that you are already whole and complete. Right now, right here, there is nowhere to go. Whatever is given is enough for you. And when you operate your life like that, then a magic happens. 
if you feel oh i am not good enough mali somai ji kehti hu i should professor has created desire in me i have to go and do another phd from the quers and then only i'll be good enough so i'm not trying to say that i'm saying right now you're in christ university it is a great university feel yourself so blessed so grateful and do whatever is possible then many things will start happening in life and uh, one more advice i'd like to give is you know that do not make so many great plans because you do not know what is going to happen tomorrow i got one near death experience in 2013 and another near death experience i got just few days back in first of february where i met with a very serious car accident my car collided with a truck head on and i got saved so these moments also you know my you know the airbag came out and all i i got saved so i see that each and every moment is now a bonus for me so i would have gone and uh, you know the rishi ji's commitment i i would not be able to fulfill what he <laughs> but god is great so i believe looking every day as a unique gift as a great opportunity uh so maybe 40 50 percent plan but 40 50 percent go with the flow maybe 50 60 percent for me i me myself family but 30 40 percent for those people work for those people who will never know oh this gift came from somya ji i do not know or sanjeev ji they will uh, they will not know so if you become a part of the bliss which is given to you and if you share and care like the bible says it is in giving that you receive so be a unconditional giver and then you will see that the great thing is start happening if they are already not there i just thought to add these two points thank you uh, so you mentioned that uh, you visited himalayas you did narmada yatra and all so we also heard that every year you make it a point to visit himalayas and we were wondering you have lot of things on your platter so how do you find time to do all these things sir and how do you balance your work personal and professional life yeah this is what i learned little late in my life earlier i was also getting uh, all over the place getting trying to find time but now what i do i find out that what are five things important to me you know a professor ka example tha ki that he brought a jar and then he tried to put some sand and this pebble and all and then he had you know big rock he could not put there so then he, what he did he put those bigger rocks first and then put those sand and other small pebbles over there so i also have tried to arrange my life around that so what i do you know there are certain things which are sacrosanct wherever i work that going for this kind of uh, rebound trip is very very important to me and uh, they are part of my calendar because my current job it gives me a lot of plenty of opportunities i get like you know two month of summer break two month of winter break and uh, a lot of you know consulting leave i get and uh, the university where i work Obi Jindal University is a very professional university. They will discuss with you that what you want to do in one year, and then they will not bother you for one year. So, like an American model, they have. Um, so, I negotiate well in advance, and I firstly give myself a priority because if I take care of my health, my well-being, the thing and causes which are very dear to me. then i am more productive for my family and for my employer and everybody and if i compromise there then i'm good for nothing neither here um and coming to work life balance i used to work 18 hours a day or even more sometimes but i do yoga nidra there is a very important concept of yoga nidra where you for 45 minutes it is equivalent to almost like 3 hour of deep sleep So I believe the students and colleagues, if they are able to harness into these possibilities of doing meditation.
meditation, mindfulness, yoga nidra, your productivity goes up like anything. Uh, so it recharges you really well. And uh, if there is a possibility, if I come to Bangalore, I can give you a session. Yoga nidra and meditation. I have done it once in Christ University. Many years, uh, I think Mr. Tommy was there and uh, then he invited me. Um, so I'd like to say there was a time when going to the Himalayas sometimes, then going to a beach, then going to a forest. That is how I was rotating myself. But then I'm also going to cut this, cut this down now. <clears throat> because what was happening, there I go, the environment is such that I have become calm. Because the natural environment support me there. But now I have to go to the next level. That I am in the midst of all the problem, all the chaos. Still, can I be calm over here? Can I have the same enjoyment what I am getting in Himalayas while I am sitting here in Sonipat? So, I am now aiming for that. That I don't need those, you know, the crutches. You baisakhi nahi chahiye nere. I want healthy legs. But of course, if you go to these places, naturally they, they have their own ecosystem. You are in touch with those five, uh, you know, the basic tattwa of life, how the life is made of air, water, akash, bhumi, and agni. And uh, that is a very profound impact on you. And I would like to request that sometime if you get time, go for nature walk, just be there, do nothing, do not carry your phone over there and just try to explore that who you are, what is the possibility you have. And about your question of work-life balance, I'd like to add one point here. That when you see work as a work, then there's a problem. Oh my God, when is the Friday coming? Thank God, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. Or Monday morning blues or I. But you don't know it is a Saturday or a Friday or a Monday. So basic feeling that work is looking like a burden, then only there is a problem. Otherwise, that is all I can I'd like to say. और मतलब मजा आता है मतलब मैं आपको क्या बताऊं मतलब कुछ अगर मिल जाता है ना मान लो वीकेंड में भी कुछ काम करना है ये भी करना है यू कैन यू नो कैन सी फ्रॉम माय आईज यू नो मुझे तो पता ही नहीं लगता कब वीकेंड है क्या आई डोंट नो व्हेदर आई वांट टू क्वेश्चन यस 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 सर यू शेयर्ड योर एक्सपीरियंस ऑन हाउ इट वाज इन हिमालयास एंड ऑल दोस तत्वस एंड योग निद्रा एंड सो मेनी थिंग्स so we even know that you are a pioneer in bringing this self awareness or mindful leadership in uh, this academic setting so what made you to venture into this field of mindfulness okay see what i saw that the teachers were playing very small they were not living a life what they truly deserve and some were not getting paid well so they thought that their value is less Sometimes they were not get, getting you know, enough respect and they, again they were thinking of oh, society is not. So that is how the self-awareness thing came into my mind. You are what you believe you are. In one of the deep meditation sessions, I got this whole insight. And after that, I've been trying to do a program known as Teacher to Guru program. And Guru, as you know, is made of two words, Gu and Ru. Gu means andhira, darkness, and Ru means to remove that darkness. So when you talk about removing the darkness in the mind of the student, firstly you have to remove the darkness within you. For that you need enlightenment. And one is that thinking about the external sources. Like you feel, oh, I'll get happiness if I get a new iPhone 13. But how long that happiness is going to remain? If you say, if I get a thing to teach in Harvard. By the way, I have, Harvard has invited me now. Um, I'll be going soon. So, question is that any external pleasure will give you only a limited happiness and once you have it, then the pleasure is gone. So how to know 
more deeper ways in which you are recharged each and every moment. So then I got experience. Uh, I also have you know gone to different ashrams all over India and even abroad also. Um, and then I got in touch with you know, the heartfulness meditation, and that made a very important role in my life. And uh, that basically talks about the whole bliss is already within you. So you may feel that the happiness is coming through that iPhone, but it is not. It is like the same thing, like you feel uh, light is coming from the moon, but the light is not coming from the moon. It is a reflected light of the sun. In the same way, you will know the value which you are giving to iPhone 13 is not the value of iPhone 13, but a reflection of self. So maybe you're feeling happy, you will feel happy with the new phone. If you're feeling sad, no, no matter what kind of instrument, instrument is given to you, you will not be happy. So the self is the only satya. So then I got drawn into the meditation more deeply. And then I realized my inner conflicts and other things, there's a feeling of that I am not good enough. What you say, abhav and prabhav. Feeling of not good enough or living under somebody's influence. Abhav and prabhav. Moving from there to swabhav and swadharma. Means my inner nature and what I'm meant for. So once you go into that domain and I found that how it can transform any, any academic leader. And then you also become somebody who is like uh, very much free from the ego mind. Because I have seen that sometimes you become an HOD and you feel, oh, he is not saying Namaskar to me. He is not saying, good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Oh, he is being very smart. I have to teach him or her a lesson. So how it is coming? Because you are not feeling connected with that person. More would you feel I am separate and you know he or she is different. So it is all about connecting. That is what you call the yoga. Yoga means you know the com combination, the merger of your identity with mind. And before that, your connection with your body, mind, spirit is very important. And there is only one instrument, and that is a meditation and mindfulness. It is a little deep topic, which maybe I may not be able to explain that in a short period. But it is a very powerful thing. Even I'll have five Mercedes or three BMW, then I'll, I'll be happy. You can be happy right now, right here. And um, so that is how I got drawn into it. And uh, in my earlier stream, when I was president of IHMR University, we used to do laughter yoga together in the morning. And we were also starting with meditation as we start our day. And uh, when we were leaving the office, we were doing the cleaning together. Cleaning me kya hota hai ki that we suppose uh, during the day mali me somay ji se naraj ho gaya. Kare, somay, what you do? It is not fair. Wo somay naraj ho gayi. And uh, then wo gussa ho ki ghar jayegi. And you know, then she will be very ghar me ladai karegi. <laughs> so question ye hai, I should clean that item. Oh, Samya, I am so sorry. Samya, I was upset and, you know, let's clean it up. So she goes as a full person back to her home. You do not know whether you are alive tomorrow or she is alive tomorrow. So these are good practices. If you follow as an academic leader, you will build a great team. And the great leaders always create great leaders. They do not create followers. Um, sir, uh, uh, pandemic has changed the world of education. Now, uh, do you have any piece of advice to our students and faculty members to stay relevant? How can they stay relevant? You told us how to be mindful, both students, faculty members, everybody, how to be mindful, enjoy and be present and all those things. But how can we stay relevant? I would like to say that you know, being relevant firstly for an industry or any job person is one thing. But firstly, my major advice is to stay relevant to yourself, then to your family, and then to your organization. 
and then you know anything else first of all you should be all an integral person and because sometime your heart wants something your mind wants something or you are doing something because you want some money so that kind of distortion is there and whatever you do you feel are you doing this why are you doing this why am i doing this so first of all usme aapko relevant hona hai that is very very important and of course the other thing are there that you find out how business scene is changing you know if somebody tells ki bhai wo jo medical representative hai uh, that is still has to say oh yes sir can i come in i want to show this are bhai wo time hi nahi now you don't know how to request for a zoom meeting with a doctor or any other thing like you know the lawyer if he does not know he or she doesn't know how to do the online meeting and online petitions so we have to see that how the entire battlefield has changed and with that what is the new set of competencies i have to develop but those are some competency which you can learn today they will become fit tomorrow then again you have to learn new thing so always learning unlearning relearning that phase has to continue and also the world is changing very fast now so you have to be abreast but at the same time love yourself the way you are and the way you are not maybe even if you are short in height you still love oh yeah i am a great person chote log hi badhiya majid majidar kaam karte hain so nothing of that sort apne ko the way you are you love yourself and you will see a great power coming in you the moment you feel ye nahi hai wo nahi hai this is not there this is not there then you will be under stress all the time mind is turbulent then your productivity and everything will be affected that way so in order to remain relevant is still relevant to yourself firstly love yourself and then other thing will follow there is no need to follow the trend that i have to be relevant for a job maybe you can be a job creator well ask and you will get it even bible says so somebody who will ask seek and you will be given even in the hindu mythology they say there is a kalpa vriksha kalpa vriksha means you know sometime you just desire and it happens you know like one in law of attraction the secret that also talk about the same thing so what you are thinking day in day out is what manifest if you think that you are not good enough you will be not good enough if you think i am great i deserve great thing in life those thing will be lined up before you and i am sharing this practically from my personal experience life mein kuch bhi asambhav nahi nothing you can create anything you want for your life pandemic or no pandemic doesn't matter yes sir so thank you so much for sharing those experience uh, with us on those suggestions uh, sir uh, now uh, your long list of credentials speaks volumes about uh, your focus and nowadays you know that uh, our students have a lot of distraction i would say it might be either from technology social media or many other things so uh, could you please guide them on how to stay focused now now from relevant to stay focused among different distraction and attain their goals फोकस भी जरूरी है यंग स्टूडेंट दे इफ दे विल नॉट एक्सपीरियंस मेनी ऑफ द सो कॉल अट्रैक्शन एट दिस टाइम वेन विल दे डू दैट आई थिंक समथिंग इज फाइन बट यू नो बींग माइंडफुल ऑफ तुम ये काम क्यों कर रहे इवन इफ समबडी हु यू नो जस्ट वॉन्ट टू है कैजुअल ड्रिंक आई विल नॉट सी इट इज बैड यू सी एक्सप्लोर एंड सी ओ इट इज नॉट गुड फॉर मी rather than somebody who will say oh yes i want to have it mani mat ichha ho rahi hai no it should be there aur wo kare no 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 i don't want it so a model hai ki that even for being a yogi you should be first be a bhogi you know that means you experience it and then you see what it is do not follow anybody else's model that what is relevant what is focused and what is unfocused you decide on your own what you want to do 
because society has their own way to control you. Society will always prescribe for you. This is good for you. This is not good for you. Now you are an adult, 18 plus or 21. You have good enough time to decide whether you really want this or you don't want this. So that will be my humble advice to the student and they know pretty well what they want in life and why not. But of course, if there is anything, indulgence, which is going to create a weaker person out of you, like, you know, if it is compromising on your health or something or well-being, then don't do it. Maybe try one or two times and then leave it. Uh, somebody gave a very good advice to me, uh, Dr. Pankaj Ghar, whom I met recently. He said, Bhai, aapne malo full right ho gaya, zero lag gaya. Aapne karo kama liye. Malo, kisi bhi vikti ka naam lo, zero, zero lagate hai. Ek laag, das laag, ek karo, bees karo, pachas karo, whatever it is, you know, you have created. One hai, uske piche laga ja raha hai. Malo, ten karoos ho gaya. Aage kya hai, one hai. If you remove one, then what happens? All become zero. Or wo one kya hai? That one is your health. So health will compromise. Nahi karna. Ki agar subah doorna hai to doorna hai. Gym jana hai, yoga karna hai, meditation, mindfulness karna hai to karna hai. To usse kya hoga? You will have the right IQ, right EQ, and also the right SQ. There is spiritual question. So, ye jab aap karoge na, mind, body, soul, in sab mein jab alignment aa jata hai, then you yourself know. Ye karna hai, ye try karke chhodna hai. Isme kya karna hai, what I want to do and why I want to do it. To wo saara rasta apne aap nikal jata hai. Because distraction or so many mein ek ek ko nahi bata sakta. Kai bache hain, bilkul phone pe lage rehte hain. Usko kuch chahiye, kisi ko kuch chahiye. So, in nutshell, I have given this advice. Mindfully, whatever you are doing, be aware of it. There is no bad thing. That's all I can say. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for taking uh, time out of your busy schedule and uh, answering all our questions uh, delicately and patiently. So, it was indeed a privilege and honor for us to have you with us today. And thank you once again for uh, giving your insights on uh, academic leadership, mindfulness, or work-life balance, and many other takeaways which we had. So it was really a great afternoon, I would say, uh, full of wisdom. We really look forward to have you once again in the future, sir. Thank you once again. Very, very, very nice. Mere ko bhi bahut acha laga. It is really so great. And uh, uh, Rishi ji ko bhi mere fir se dhanyawad dena chahunga for this opportunity. Or you know anything for you know, him and you and uh, for all the students. So uh, it is a matter of great pleasure and honor to be here. And thank you all the listeners also who are there. So thank you so much. Namaskar. Thanks. Thanks.